Hi, I'm Michael Wargo, team pilot with Precision Aerobatics. Today I'm going to cover a subject that I'm not exactly sure why I haven't before. But as far as I'm concerned, you know, once you get a, to a, a certain level with your flying, you can rolling Harrier, you can do all these things, and you really start approaching, you know, really trying to be an expert. There's a matter of really dialing in your aircraft. These are fine-tuning adjustments to get out of it what you want. And this is different from anything that I've done, and you'll see as soon as I start flying and as soon as I start explaining what I'm going to do. For instance, if I'm doing a rolling Harrier, the amounts of input that I want to make on the rudder, um, you know, as it's rolling, going all the way left, all the way right, um, might be a little uncomfortable. And if I want to adjust that a little bit, because in a rolling Harrier, maybe I don't want to put as much up or as much down. Like on that side, when it's uh, inverted, I don't want to be pushing way up and then way back on every roll. You know, I can adjust the elevator a little bit to make sure um, that it kicks in a little earlier because the Expo is dulling the center, remember. You got to be careful with too much Expo. I, I create a rate on some of my more aggressive aileron planes that slows the ailerons down, it does some things like that. And I also adjust the rudder and the elevator to make it a little more comfortable so I don't quite have to go all the way over. Um, now, the big danger in that when you're doing it is if the rudder kicks in a little too early, it will turn the aircraft. So you have to adjust your flying. But again, if you can do a low rolling Harrier, you should be able to kind of feel what it is you're working towards. So let me show you uh, exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm going to roll this plane. Now, as it rolled that time, you see the nose fell? See, the nose didn't really rise very much. Um, so where I naturally wanted to deflect uh, the rudder wasn't really giving me the effect I wanted, so I had to do more. So. Um, as I do more, now the, the, with that much rudder, the nose is staying just perfect. So we have to dial in exactly how much rudder we want to input. Um, if at this point the rudder feels just a little bit, um, if the rudder feels a little bit sluggish, uh, you can take some Expo off. It's not a rates thing, it's an Expo thing. How quick it kicks in. Now if I kick the rudder in too quickly, watch. You see it already start to turn in a circle? Kick in too early, look, it comes right around. That's how I you know, managed to make these turns, you see? So, dialing it in and, and cutting back the Expo a little bit is going to change things dramatically. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to land, I'm going to uh, change my settings from what I like to being a little extra sensitive. What I've done here is made the Expo pretty extremely um, low. So now I'm getting a lot better response for the rudder and on a really uh, low, slow Harrier, this is only 20% Expo on the rudder and it actually feels pretty comfortable. I really don't have to um, use a ton of rudder to keep the nose up. Um, what I generally lower the, the Expo to is about 40 from 60 or so. And for me, that makes it, that usually makes it just uh, perfect. Now you see, if I add a lot of rudder, um, I can really keep the elevator up. But remember, the endpoints are the same. So this is not a rates issue, this is uh, an Expo issue. Now for the elevator, when I go inverted, you know, um, as I get slower and slower, I use more and more elevator. That's the uncomfortable one for me to uh, manipulate. Um, as I'm rolling through the rolling Harrier, um, some of my planes require a lot of up elevator, and it tends to make it look a little sloppy. I'd like to be as close to just using the rudder as possible, but I have to go up, down, up, down elevator. So. If I program that to kick in a little early, I will have the same exact problem. It'll have more of a tendency to turn. You'll have to watch it a little more. But in the end, you have to adjust this to suit yourself. 
um, I know that sometimes it feels really good to just just throw the the rudder to the corner and when doing the rolling harrier just just push the surfaces right to the max every time like when I'm going this slow let me do it closer so you see what I'm talking about if I'm going really slow or really nose high okay I need tons I am pegging the rudder on each one of these but you see how high that nose is and if I'm going to do that, uh, you know, maybe the expo isn't going to matter quite as much. Um, and there is a contradicting reason also to stay at a relatively low uh, or relatively high expo. Because if you're going to be doing bullet rolls, right? Hold on. Okay. We don't want the rudder to kick in too much because it causes the plane to do what it just did, which it, it caused the plane to go uh, offline. So with a ton, with a ton of Expo, you get, because it doesn't need much, with a ton of Expo, see, the, the nose will stay just where it belongs. The roll really nice, but right now, I'm gonna use a little more and show you what the rudder kicking into early, because there's not enough Expo, what happens to the bullet uh, to the bullet roll? So I'm going fast. Now watch. You see how all of a sudden? I mean, it dramatically uh, goes up, down, sideways, because by going left and right on the rudder, um, it's just kicking in way too much. Uh, a bullet roll requires very little. For for me to to actually do it right now and keep the nose normal, I, I I'm using barely any. Now the nose is level. Okay, fine-tuning the rates works with a lot of things and is important for a lot of things. Um, for instance, um, you know, if uh, you have a lot of elevate or ailerons programmed in, each plane, because every aileron performs differently, for instance, one of my pattern ships, the ailerons are stupid fast. The other ones, for a pattern plane, they're really kind of sluggish. So because the sluggish ones are like that, you have to really fine tune the rate. So where you're um, coming into that, that snap part of your sequence, that it does what it's supposed to do and it snaps you know, quickly. It has that nice snappy look to it. And um, on one, it requires a lot less expo, a lot less expo. And um, the other one, it requires quite a lot more because once you pull out of that configuration from the snap and you just want to fly a level again, if you don't have enough expo in it, um, you know, the turns will look a little jerky. They'll, it'll just move a little too fast. Um, and if I'm trying to do a long, slow roll and the, aler the ailerons are kicking in too fast, well, then the, I, I can't really keep that nice, consistent speed like I could if, for instance, you know, I really want it to be a, a very smooth uh, cadence to the roll. So... As you're fine-tuning these things, you need to really watch that stuff closely. Um, right now, I'm going to show you how, on a lower rate, that I fine-tune, um, you know, my my snap rate or my precision rates. Let's go to my precision rate. I'm flying at two, uh, maybe a little over half throttle, and I'm pulling up. If it feels like the turns are not, are just a little too sharp. Um, right now I'm feeling like I have, I'm not sure why, but I feel like I have, maybe it's because I'm into the wind, but it feels like if I want to do a nice smooth loop or bring it to a 45 in a controlled way, just like that, I had very, very little, uh, manipulation of the elevator. You have to make sure you have enough to get around at a loop like this at the very least. But if I, if I cut the, uh, or I, I add a lot of expo to this, what will happen is these lines, like this, moving straight up like this, see how pretty? All this stuff is happening, making sure that I, my rates have enough expo in it to keep it very, very smooth. So I watch and I make sure 
that you know I can at least pull the stick to maybe an eighth uh, to get uh, like a nice Immelman or something like this. Like for me to go like this, I need to make sure I get to at least an eighth of a stick. Of course, you need enough to, to turn around. But that's maybe as sharp as I can turn at a, at a slow speed. And that's a good loop size for your lowest rate. And I know a lot of people feel uncomfortable getting the rate down below 20% or something. But remember, this is an aerobatic plane. So it takes very little to make this thing do a loop. Anyway, to make a long story short with the rates, fly the plane and watch it and take two, three or four flights trying on low rates to see how well it loops, to see how slow you can make it roll purposely. Um, make sure there's enough expo in it so that you have to move the stick a little bit to get it to roll. If you're barely getting off center, it's, it's not controllable. Um, conversely with the rolling harriers, watch it. If, if the ailerons are too fast, you could use the rates to tone those down because generally you're just getting it to roll. So you're using a lot of the surface. With the elevator and rudder, there's a lot more subtleties to it. Aileron, you just peg it over there or get close to pegging it, you know, to make sure the plane is continually rolling. The other is much more nuanced. So my suggestion is get out there, fly your plane on all the rates. And once you're used to dialing it in like this, like, like I am, I can make that plane fly like the other plane and react similarly. And it's a really important part of your, your growth in flying well.